Welcome to the Financial Literacy Review. Um, this is Ms. Gillum. I'm going to walk through the review. If you have any questions, remember to ask your teacher before your test. So let's get started. So in section one, we are looking at key words um, for balancing a bank account. So the words we are looking at are withdrawal, deposit, transfer, account balance, and auto draft. So let's start with withdrawal. Withdrawal is the amount of money that you are taking out of your bank account, whether it's online or through an ATM machine or going directly to a teller at a bank. Next, we have a deposit. Deposit means we are putting money into our bank account. It can be a check deposit. It could be um, a direct deposit from your work where they are depositing money for the amount of work you have done. Next, we have the word transfer. So transfer means I am taking money from one account and moving it to another. For example, um, if I am transferring money from my checking account to a savings account. Account balance is the balance of money that you have in your bank account at a specific time, um, once all the withdrawals and deposits are completely totaled. And last, we have overdraft. And an overdraft means you are taking more money out of your account than you actually have available. These next few slides are for my visual learners um, to help them remember the words. So if you are withdrawing money, you are taking money out of your ATM or out of your bank account. So in this picture, it is someone taking money out. Deposit. To deposit money, we are putting money in. Just like putting money in a piggy bank, you are depositing money. A transfer is moving money from one account to another. An account balance, as you can see below, this is not my personal account balance. This was just one I found online. So it is what is currently available to you. These are each a balance for each of their accounts. So it's how much money do they currently have. So an overdraft is taking too much money out of your account, which leaves you in the negative, which is not a good thing. Okay, so now we are on to balancing a checkbook. Um, or balancing your account. So the last balance that was written down is the $327.50. So that is where we need to start. And notice right here it says payment withdrawal. That means those are going to be negatives. We're subtracting those from our accounts. Deposits are positive things. We're putting those into our account. So let's start with $327.50 and we're going to subtract 150. So we do that. We get 50 cents. I have to borrow, make that 12, 2, 7, 1. So now I have $177.50 in my balance. Then I withdraw another $152.35. So I'm going to write that one now. So you can't do 0 minus 5, so do not forget to borrow. So 10 makes 5, 1, so we have 15, 5, and 2. So now we have $25.00. And 15 cents. Next, we have $62.02. And two cents. But we know we're going to end up in the negative because we only have $25.15. So remember that even when you're needing to withdraw the 62, you're actually going to subtract the 25 away. Because remember, I talked about how that's one thing that wasn't lied to you that the bigger number always goes on top. So we're going to borrow, make that a 9, make this a 1, 10, um, or 12, sorry, 12 minus 5 is 7, 9 minus 1 is 8, I'm going to need to borrow some more, this is 11 minus 5 is 6, 5 minus 2 is 3, bring that decimal down, so this is negative $36.87. And notice, that's an overdraft fee, that's why they got charged, because she took out too much money. So now she's having to pay $45 because she took out more money than she has. So now, so we have negative $36.87, and we're actually going to add the negative 45 to that because they're both negative. So 7, 8, decimal, 11, and that makes 8. So now I have negative $81.87. But now we're going to add 200 to that. So one of them's negative, one of them's positive. So we're actually going to subtract them. But the bigger number goes on top. Borrow, borrow, borrow. One. This becomes a nine, 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 ten. So this is three, one, um, eight. 
one, one. So now I have $118.13. And now she has to play her electric bill, which is $45.35. So we're going to subtract that away. So three minus five we can't do. So we're gonna need a we're gonna borrow all the way from here. So seven, this becomes ten, make that thirteen. So eight, seven, decimal, two, and then eleven minus four is seven. So now I have seventy-two dollars. Whoops, two dollars and seventy-eight cents. Now she's getting paid. A direct deposit means they're putting money in. So um, I'm going to write over here. I'm actually out of room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box to write in. Since I'm out of room, let me actually get a box to write on. Okay, there we go. So now we have 72, so we need 1,456 dollars and 28 cents plus the 72 dollars and 78 cents we already have so that's 16 1 makes that a zero carry that one bring the decimal that becomes 9 12 5 1 so this is 1529 dollars and six cents and then they are withdrawing 200 dollars so we're going to take 200 from this so we have six zero nine two and so we are left with $1,329.06. And then we're going to add $500 to that. And that will leave us with $1,829. And $1 Next, we're looking at a few more vocabulary terms when we were talking about um, education, different types of education. Um, and blank is one or two year program where students learn a skill or a trade. That is an associate's degree. Oops, kind of ran out of room there. B blank is money borrowed in order to pay for college. That would be a student loan. A blank is a one or two year degree beyond undergraduate. So after the undergraduate, that's where a master's degree comes from, is after you have finished your undergraduate. And yes, there's also a doctorate, but we're stopping at master's. Um, and blank is a four year degree. That's the undergraduate, also known as a bachelor's, but that's an undergraduate degree. And lastly, blank refers to beyond high school. Remember, that is that post-secondary. We talked about how post means after. Secondary is high school. Okay. Use those keywords to help you. Okay, now we're looking at the check. Some of my lines did not show up. So there should be a line here on yours, a line here. There should be a box here. There should be a line under here, and number four is actually pointing here. There should also be a line here and a line here. Okay, so number one is obviously the date, because it says right there beside it. Number two is who the check is written to. Who or what the check is written to. Number three is the money, amount of money. And this is in numbers. Okay, so for example, let's say this was four, 20, four, 17, and I'm writing this check to Miss Ragel. And I'm writing her a check for $500. So it's written out in numbers. And then number four is amount of money. This one, though, is going to be in words. Okay, so I would write $500.
and then remember to put that zero, zero out of 100 to show there's no change. Okay, number five, where is, oh, number five is your ad address. I see it at the top now. And, and this is your address. And number six is your signature line where you sign that you approve this check. Number seven is what is the check for? So it's kind of like a note to yourself. Oh, I wrote this check for, um, let's say, to donate to Miss Ragel's classroom. Um, so we'll just put a donation. Okay, and then I would sign here. And then number eight would be your account number. Account and actually routing. But we're not gonna get too detailed into that. Okay, so the first question is, where is the account number? Um, so it is always at the bottom of your check. It didn't say what is it, it says where. Um, so what is the date of the check? So that is January 12th, 2004. Who is the check made payable to? So that would be Acme Industries. And what is the check number? The check number is 127. Okay, so first things first, a debit card is protected by a PIN number, which anyone will use when they go in to scan their card, it'll ask for the PIN number. Next, a credit card is protected by the signature of the person. Next, we have the limit on spending. The limit on spending on your debit card is based on the money in your bank account. And the limit on spending on your credit card is a, ma um, is a maximum um, limit set by the, the credit card company. Okay, where does the money come from? So a debit card is you are using your money from your bank account. And a credit card is money that you are getting loaned from a company that you will have to pay back later. Um, issued by a debit card is issued by your bank when you open a checking account. And lastly, um, a credit card is issued by a company. Um, you must be approved for the credit card. You do not just get it and they will run a credit check. On a debit card, it is just you receive it when the bank account is opened. Um, both cards can be used um, to pay for groceries, to pay for gas just to pay for different things. Um, credit cards are mainly used, I would say, to make larger purchases that maybe you can't pay all of the money at one time and it breaks it up into payments for you um, to pay it off. Now let's take a look at credit report, um, which comes with using a credit card or any type of loan that is given to you. So a credit report tells lenders um, if you would be a good candidate to give a loan to. And you can get a free credit report once a year. Um, so let's start by talking about what's on your credit report. So the things you'll find on there is your employment, um, your date of birth, and your social security number mainly are used to identify that it is you, um, your current previous addresses, current and previous addresses, um, just to keep track of where you're at, current loans that you may have out, um, and credit cards and so on and your loan history, like have you paid off your loans on time? Those types of things are all on your credit report. And a debt to credit ratio, how much money do you owe versus how much money you can actually take out on a um, credit. Now let's take a look at things that are not on your credit reports. So all of the following are things that will not be found on your credit report. For your race, your religion, your marital status, your cash payments, um, how many times you use your debit card, and the money loaned to you from family and friends. So now we're actually going to talk about our credit score. So first let's talk about the range of credit scores. So 300 is the lowest credit score you can have. Um, and then the highest credit score you can have at 850. So if you're in the bad range from 364, only secured loans are given for people in this range. Um, and then 640 to 680, creditors will give you a loan, but the interest rates are gonna be super high. 
and then from 680 to 720 you'll be approved for almost every almost all your loans that you ask for with pretty good rates and 720 to 850 you will get the best rates because they believe in you to be able to pay to always pay back in a timely manner so we're gonna look at the positive impacts on credit score and the negative impacts on credit score um, so by impact I mean how would something affect your credit score so the first thing and the most important thing is paying your bills on time so you always need to make your payments on time next we have a positive impact is low debt to income meaning you only um, maybe you have like six hundred dollars in debt and your income is let's say fifty thousand a year that's a low debt to income ratio because it'd be easy for someone to pay off the eight hundred dollars if they're making fifty thousand a year uh, fifteen percent is your older accounts um, the older your account is your credit history is the more you've shown that you pay your payments on time um, the greater your score is going to be and then 10% is less of new credit applications because the more credit cards you have the more money you're trying to loan from people and they worry that you're not gonna pay those loans back so do not just go get credit card after credit card after credit card that is not a good thing to do for positively infect Im impacting your credit score and last installment of credit that you're constantly paying your loans um, like school loans mortgages like it's always it's a constant installment of that credit that it doesn't just go away um, some negative impacts on credit can be late payments that is the worst that will knock your credit score down high debt to income ratio meaning you owe a lot of money and you don't make a lot of money so they're not sure you're gonna pay your money back in a timely manner um, more new accounts which is what I talked about with the less new credit accounts um, like going to every store in the mall and opening a credit card is not a good idea it'll affect your score and then revolving credit payment depends on balance and varies month to month so you always want to pay the same amount each time okay so now we're going to look at some vocabulary words when we were talking about paying for school so tuition is actually the fee you have to pay to go to college and so that is an F and then grant as not in the boy's name but an actual grant is money given to you by a college or by the government to help you pay for the um, to go to school there but it also is money that you don't have to give back um, to the government or to the college so that is C Okay, next we have a work study program, which is exactly like it sounds. A student works and studies to help pay for their tuition, which is A. And then a scholarship is money awarded to a person um, from a college or a private institution to help pay. And they usually are like athletic scholarships. Um. So my pencil ran out of juice, so I had to charge it. There we go, E. And then public schools. Are schools that are funded by the government um, they get receive money to help pay for some certain things at the school and then private schools do not receive money from the state okay now we are looking at real-world math calculations with the percent so the first one says um, determine the amount of money Hannah would earn after one year at New Choice so first we have to see that she deposits $1,500. So the APY is how much she would earn from the bank. So we would do 1,500 times 0 0.025 or 25 thousandths. Zero, zero, five times five is 25. Carry that two, five times one, seven. Then placeholder, zero, zero, two times five is 10, would make three add that you get zero zero five seven three and there are three decimal places so there should be three in your answer which will make thirty seven dollars and fifty cents for her APY but she has five dollars a month fees so we would do twelve times five because we're looking for one year so that would be sixty dollars in fees so she's gonna spend more money in fees than what she makes from the APY so we need to see how much more money 
So zero, borrow, five, make that a nine, two, make this a five, two. So that would give us $22.50 and it's gonna be a negative. She owes this amount of money. Okay, next it says determine the amount of she would earn after one year at Best Quality Bank. So this time we have 4%, so we're gonna do 1,500 times four hundredths, placeholder, placeover, five times four is 20, four times one is four, plus the two is six. We have two decimals, so she's gonna make $60 on the APY, plus she has three month fees, $3 monthly fees, so 12 times three is $36. So we're gonna subtract that from the APY, and that will give us $24. So this one is a positive 24 because her APY was greater. Remember, APY tells us tells us how much money our bank will make for us by having money in the account. And the last question, or next we have the Tillsdale Bank. So we're still doing the 1500 and I'm actually going to make a box again to work this out on top. So here we go. So we have $1,500 times the APY of three, whoops, we need to move that decimal. Let's try that again. 38 hundredths, zero, zero, eight times five is 40, eight plus that four is 12, placeholder zero, zero, three times five is 15, carry the one, three times one is three, plus that one is 45. And we add that, we get um, this number, but we have three places so we have one two three so this will be fifty seven dollars in apy and it has no monthly fees so this is just going to be fifty seven dollars so the last question says which bank should hannah choose um well it really depends like different people have explained it different ways if you pick um a lot of people are like well pick the Tellsdale bank because it, you get a greater apy but you have to be careful because she only has a $1,500 amount. And if she goes below that, she's going to get charged. So the Tellsdale could maybe go back. Um, you wouldn't pick new choice because you would be in the negative if you picked them. So best quality bank might be your safest choice. But once again, as long as you're explaining your reason, it doesn't matter which one you're picking except for new choice because you're not making any money. Okay, so Audrey decides to pay $2,050 for construction costs using her credit card. Her card currently has a rewards program of 1.5% cash back. How much cash back will she get with this purchase? So we're going to take the 1.5%, change that to a decimal. So you have 0 0.0, actually, sorry, 15 thousandths. We're going to times 15 thousandths by how much she spent. So we get 0, 0.25 to... 10 and then placeholder sorry for the interruption then you have one times zero zero one times five five one times zero zero one times two two add that and you get this number but we have three decimal places so over to thing so she will get thirty dollars and seventy five cents back from her rewards program okay now we are looking at scholarships financial aid so the first question is, how much financial aid does Alabama A&M versus University of North Alabama? So the first one, she has athletic scholarship and a work study. So she would get 4,300 plus 1,000 for, for the work study to pay for her loan. So there is, she will get $5,300 of financial aid from A&M. For University of North Alabama, we have to figure out what 35% off is. So to do that, we need to turn 35% into a decimal. 35% moving the decimal two places to the left becomes 35 hundredths, and we can multiply. 17,175 times 35 hundredths. and it runs a little bit into the next line. But if we add, we 
we end up with $6,011.25 as the academic scholarship. I'm going to rewrite it up here just so we can see a little bit clearer. Now, in addition to the academic scholarship, Rashid will also receive $1,550 in work study. And when we add, we get the total financial aid for the University of North Alabama at $7,561.25. In Part B, the question is, what would Rashid's tuition be at Alabama A&M University and University of North Alabama if he receives both the athletic scholarship and the work-study program? To calculate how much Rashid will pay, we start out with the tuition amount, $15,155, and we need to subtract the total amount of financial aid he received from Alabama A&M. So we are subtracting $5,000. $300. And we see once we subtract that Rashid would be responsible for paying $9,855 at Alabama A&M. Now for University of North Alabama, we follow the same procedure. We take the total tuition, $17,175, and we subtract the total amount of financial aid he receives. So we are going to subtract $7,561.25. We start out by borrowing across, keep our decimal point aligned, borrow one more time and we see that at the University of North Alabama Rashid would still be responsible for paying $9,613.75 per year after his financial aid package. So in Part C, we are asked which school is the better financial option for Rashid if he gets all of the financial aid offered. Now the University of North Alabama offers more in financial aid and Rashid would have to pay less tuition in the end so we're going to say that the University of North Alabama is Rashid's best financial option.